space, time, and the human senses. These are the tools with which we measure value in an automobile. These are the tools we used to find out if the 1963 Imperial offers the buyer more value than the 1963 Lincoln. Let's make something clear at the outset. Lincoln is a fine car. Otherwise, there'd be no point in comparing it with Imperial. There are important differences, however, and the wise fine car buyer should study them. First, the differences in styling. A matter of personal opinion. So draw your own conclusions as we look at several side-by-side -side pictures of the two cars. Of the six models of Imperial a buyer can choose from, the Crown Imperial is considered comparable in appointments and price. This Crown Imperial four-door hardtop cost about $100 less than the Lincoln. Lincoln makes only a four-door sedan and a four-door convertible, and there is only one series. Imperial and Lincoln believe in a basic continuity of appearance, not change for the sake of change. The first big difference you notice between these cars is size. Spaciousness is the hallmark of cars in the so-called luxury price class. Imperial's interior is far more spacious than Lincoln's, as we'll see as we open the doors of both cars. By the way, notice that Lincoln's rear door opens into the wind. All other major car makers dropped this idea years ago as impractical. As we said, Imperial is far more roomy and spacious inside than Lincoln. This measurement shows front seat shoulder room, almost five inches more in Imperial factual proof of imperial comfort. But perhaps better evidence of the advantage of owning a big car is seen in these two pictures. The front seat is all the way back in both cars, so the driver has room enough. But look at the leg room in the back seat. See how much more room that man has in the lower picture. Notice too that he can look out the imperial window, but not the Lincoln. As you know, there are other marks of a luxury car than size. There are important features for driver convenience and passenger comfort. Luxury features that can't be found in lower price cars. The instrument panels are quite different in appearance and function. The exclusive Imperial panel has rich, soft padding on top and bottom, glare eliminating electroluminescent lighting, and padded steering wheel. Imperial provides the ease and safety positioning of push-button control transmission. Lincoln has the steering column mounted shift lever. And Imperial has gauges for oil pressure and ammeter indicators. Lincoln has lights only. Gauges, of course, give more precise information than lights. All the lights do is tell you you're already in trouble. Imperial's automatic parking brake release operates the instant you push, reverse, or any drive button of the transmission with the engine running. No chance of forgetting to release the brake manually, as you might in a Lincoln. And both Imperial's front door armrests contain a personal built-in storage compartment. Lincoln lacks this feature also. Imperial provides an added luxury touch with rear seat assist handles. Lincoln does not. One more note on roominess. In actual usable trunk space, Imperial has 17.8 cubic feet to Lincoln's 13.5, a difference of over four cubic feet, about the equivalent of two average suitcases. Based on what you can see and measure, Imperial gives more spaciousness, more convenience, more value, more car than Lincoln. Now let's see how they compare in handling ease and performance. In today's turnpike and freeway traffic, we must rely on our car's maneuverability and acceleration. We matched Imperial and Lincoln in a zero to 60 miles per hour acceleration and recorded the results with a high speed camera. Imperial's more powerful engine, 20 more horsepower than Lincoln's and faster transmission breakaway ratio help put it ahead from the very start so that it reaches 60 miles per hour before Lincoln. Imperial's reserve of sheer power 
means more driving ease for you. You have the extra response when and where you need it. In addition to Imperial's power advantage, you also get excellent fuel economy. Owners say this, and Imperial has proved it in five mobile gas economy runs since 1958. Here are the facts. Imperial averaged 19.04 miles per gallon in those five runs, and this is a car weighing more than two and a quarter tons. Even in lower price classes, some winners finish with less than 19 miles per gallon. Both Imperial and Lincoln ride well on a smooth highway like this. Most cars do. But let's see what happens on a rough railroad crossing. Our high-speed camera photographs Imperial and Lincoln going over a bad bump. Now the front ends come up and see how Lincoln's front wheels are barely touching the ground. At this point, Imperial has leveled off and the driver continues well under control with the car on a comfortable even keel. Lincoln is still bouncing. There are definite reasons behind this Imperial superior ride. One is Imperial's longer wheelbase. 129 inches to Lincoln's 123, which takes bumps more easily because the front and rear wheels are farther apart. Then too, Imperial has a wider rear spring base than Lincoln. 45.5 inches to 38 inches. Putting the springs farther apart lets Imperial take turns with less lean for easier driver control and more riding comfort. But most important, is torsion bar front suspension with Oroflow shock absorbers to provide better ride and control than Lincoln's coil front springs and conventional shock absorbers. Both cars have leaf rear springs. We have made some go measurements. How about some stop details? Sometimes stops aren't as ordinary as this. In an emergency, you welcome reserve stopping power. Well, Imperial has 287.2 square inches of effective brake lining to Lincoln's 227. That's 60 more square inches of brake lining working for you when you need it. In fact, the biggest brakes in the American automobile industry are behind the wheels of the 1963 Imperial, a reassuring safety factor. And Imperial's wheels are safety rim wheels designed to hold the tire on the rim in the event of a blowout, a protective measure. Lincoln uses conventional wheels. Speaking of protection, there are a few other things you should notice on these cars. Imperial's front end is well protected from possible damage and is distinguished by its exclusive freestanding headlights, a note of true elegance in classic car design. The massive front fender of the Lincoln, however, has a high vertical expanse of exposed sheet metal. Imperial's rear bumper offers excellent protection. The tail lights and body slope gracefully away from possible damage. Lincoln's rear fender and tail light are almost flush with the bumper, making them more susceptible to damage. As you know, a demonstration drive is the only way for a prospect to appreciate fully the things we brought out in this film. Only then can he experience the luxury, the spaciousness, the convenience, handling ease, and performance of the Imperial. Only then will he know the value of the rigorous testing every Imperial is put through to make sure it measures up to Imperial standards of quality. And to back up that quality, only Imperial in the fine car field guarantees the powertrain parts for five years or 50,000 miles. This is in addition to its basic one year or 12,000 mile warranty. Lincoln covers the entire car for two years or 24,000 miles. After that, the owner is liable for defects in the vital powertrain components. Read the Imperial warranty for complete information on the industry's most extensive coverage. We've taken up some of the points to consider in making a choice between these two fine cars. Points like styling and spacious comfort and performance. We hope we've made the point that every fine car buyer 
should experience imperial driving for himself. Let him apply his measures of value in space, in time, in satisfaction to the senses. Help him discover how much more value he'll get in the 1963 Imperial, America's most carefully built car.